Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. It's a plant-based fitness nutrition company. The disclaimer, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. <clears throat> So this title of this one is uh, <laughs> pretty impressive. Um, the article that I will pull to, I'm gonna just read the title of the article, Cancer Breakthrough, Exercise May Stop Disease in Its Tracks. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's a pretty strong statement. So what is it actually saying? Well, I'm gonna jump into this study and the article because the article actually has an interview with the researchers and they share some pretty interesting information in the article as well as the study itself. I'll be talking about the study. Now, there has been a lot of research on the benefits of exercise for cardiovascular health, um, reducing the risk for heart attacks and strokes and things like this improving insulin sensitivity. Uh, we know exercise does this, which uh, insulin uh, insensitivity can lead to type two diabetes, improving blood pressure, reducing the risk for hypertension. So most of the major disease states, we can find benefits from exercise. This is kind of a known, right? Uh, no duh, <laughs> but cancer? Now that's a new one. Now this is where it gets exciting. <laughs> because this is a new study, an incredible new study on how exercise actually affects cancer. What makes this study so exciting is that it's not epidemiological, it's not associative, it's not looking at a group of people and saying, well, they got less cancer overall. It's actually looking at the mechanisms of action of how exercise directly affects and causes the um, the cessation or depletion of cancer in our body. Now, this is really cool because when you, you know, I, I see lots of epidemiological studies, lots of associative studies that show, hey, there's a good association here, and those are good learning tools. But this is not as exciting as a causal study, which actually looks at, okay, we know when you do this this happens, we mark that in the bloodstream, we see those markers, and then we see what happens to the cancer cells and see them die. That's exciting because that's showing a chain of causality. Now that's a powerful study. So that's what makes this study so exciting rather than some of the other associative studies we've seen where you look at a large group of people, the ones that exercise have lower rates of cancer, but is that just association or is there really a causality? Now we can assume there's some causality here, but this study actually pinpoints how that works. So let's dive into it. So this was an interesting study because what they did is they took uh, obese people who had prostate cancer, 10 men. That was a small study. My, I understand the limitations of this study, but it's still exciting because we're looking at mechanisms of action, not just associative. If it was a 10 person study and associative, they're way too small to mean anything really. But because they're actually looking at the causality, here's what they did. They took these men and they put them on a 12 week exercise program. But what they did is they took the cancer cells, put them in a Petri dish, their own prostate cancer cells, put them in a Petri dish. And then they took their blood draws before they worked out and added it to the cancer cells and then took blood from them after they work out and added it to the to the cancer cells and the and the petri dish so they're bathing the cancer cells in their own blood that's pretty cool all right so what happens when we exercise well i'm gonna i'm gonna read the the quote directly from from the uh researchers themselves and actually this is uh directly from the study um, so the study is called myokine expression. That kind of gives it away a little bit. Myokine expression and tumor suppressive effect of serum, that's blood, following 12 weeks of exercise in prostate cancer patients on ADT or androgen um, depletion therapy. Okay, so they're um, taking this post-exercise, 
All right, so the purpose of this abstract uh, of this study, although several mechanisms have been proposed for the tumor suppressive effects of exercise, little attention has been given to the myokines, even though skeletal muscle is heavily recruited during exercise resulting in myokine surges. That means our myokines go way up in our bloodstream post exercise. So we measured resting serum myokine levels before and after exercise uh, during the intervention and the effect on the serum, the blood on the prostate cancer cells. So this is pretty, pretty interesting because what we're talking about here is the difference between uh, somebody who is not working out and somebody who has just worked out and how much cancer protective myokines these, these can become. So when you exercise, you're you know, depleting some of the body's resources. So it may, it may make sense that the body is responding to that by throwing up the big shield of defenses because you've wiped out your muscle. You wiped out your defenses a little bit because you've exercised, especially exercised very strenuously and intensely. So this is talking about chronic exercise, which is sustained exercise over 12 weeks and with uh, uh, resistance training. So it's weight training, uh, although it did include some cardiovascular training as well. So this is pretty chronic exercise. That means getting in there and doing a serious workout, not just light weights and farting around in the gym. So that's an important distinction. But when you do that, you get a surge of these myokines. So what do myokines do? Well, it's interesting. Myokines are part of the immune system that helps defend against cancer cells. And what they do is the myokines actually can attach to the outside of the cancer cells and stop them from growing. And that's pretty damn cool because when you can stop a cancer cell from growing, it doesn't metastasize. That means grow uncontrollably. That's when cancer becomes very dangerous and can kill people. Um, what you want is to keep that growth under control. And if you can actually stop it, then you give your chance, your body a chance to go over and kill that cancer cell so it doesn't actually become a threat to your life. So these myokines are actually stopping some of the uh, cancer cell growth, stopping their growth completely, which is amazing. I'm going to read the, uh, the quote directly from the study from you because that's it's a pretty amazing statement. The patient's level of anti-cancer myokines increased in just three months. Myokines can signal cancer cells to grow slower or stop completely. That's exciting. End quote. That's quite substantial, indicating chronic exercise creates a cancer suppressive environment in the body. Now, how cool is that? All you have to do is get in the gym and look good and feel good, but you're also preventing cancer from happening. Now, he goes on to talk about the mechanisms to say that myokines, this is the researcher, uh, uh, Professor Kim, uh, Dr. Kim says, myokines in of themselves don't signal the cells to die, Mr. Kim said, but they do signal our immune cells, T cells specifically, to attack and kill the cancer cells. Now that's cool. So it's basically going over, suppressing or stopping the growth so it can't do any more damage. And then it sticks its flag up and waves to the NK cells, the T cells, or the other killer cells to come over and destroy this cancer cell. Boom, all that done by the myokines would surge every time you exercise. How important is that? Now, what's really powerful, because they were just looking at prostate uh, cancer in this particular case, um, this is a direct quote from, uh, from, from Dr. Kim. We believe this mechanism applies to all cancers. Now, that's pretty exciting because definitely there are different types of cancers. There's estrogen-dependent cancers, methionine-dependent cancers. There's cancers that are, you know, more related to different aspects of, 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 um, of health and dietary concerns. Well, this mechanism through exercise can possibly potentially go about all of the cancers. Exercise. 
And that's amazing. I want to, I want to add this uh, one comment. Uh, let's see. Uh, and this is a comment from the researchers. Quote, it's important as it may indicate why men, even with advanced cancer, if they physically are active, don't succumb to the cancer as quickly. That's a pretty powerful statement. That's saying that even if you got cancer, that you could actually stop, inhibit, or even end that cancer just by exercising. That's powerful. Now, you know me, I'm almost always talking about the nutritive side of health and stuff like this. But when a study comes along that really explodes how powerful exercise can be in not only diabetes, heart attacks, cardiovascular, hypertension, high blood pressure, but now even cancer, that's why exercise is so important. It's not just about, wow, I've got big arms or whatever. No, that's not it. It's about you being able to enjoy a life free of suffering, free of disease states, and increase your chances of doing that simply by including good nutrition and exercise. Now, we've heard this all along, exercise and nutrition extends life and stuff like this, but now we actually understand the method of action, how this happens when we do chronic exercise, intense exercise. Remember my three tenets for exercise, consistency, that's something that they uh, suggested in the study, 12 weeks of consistent regular exercise. So consistency is key, number one. Number two, intensity. They said in this study it was chronic weight training exercise, resistance training exercise. So not just getting in there doing lightweight, you know, farting around stuff. No, get in there and do a serious intense workout. Now, be safe, do it correctly, gradually build up, allow your body to adapt. Smart exercising is key here, but put intensity into it. And there's lots of ways you can train with intensity without increasing weight. You can slow down the reps. You can increase the rep load. You can do lots of things like that to actually increase the intensity or the time under tension. Um, so this is pretty amazing. And, and here's another quote from the study. When we took the pre-exercise blood and the post-exercise blood and placed it over the living prostate cancer cells, we saw a significant suppression of growth of those cells only in the post-training blood. Now, this is really interesting because, you know, some people may say, hey, they were on, on uh, androgen depressant therapy that may be contributing to it. And of course, you know, that's why they're on the therapy. But what they saw is the blood from people who were not exercising and were on androgen de uh, depletion therapy, ADT, did not suppress the cancer growth. Only the blood post-workout actually suppress that. Big difference. So it's not the ADT that we're looking at in, in causality with the myokines. It's when you exercise, you increase the myokines, and that's what's causing the difference, the big difference. Not the ADT in this specific case um, in what they were looking at, which was myokines. So big difference. They took blood from non-workouts and blood from post-workout and only the post-workout suppressed that level of growth in, in, in the cancers in, in the patients. So this is a really exciting study. One more reason why you should get out there and exercise. And the reason I provide nutrition is to encourage people to get results quicker so that they will stay in the gym and stay with us. Um, it's, it's really heartbreaking when people say, tell me all the time, oh, I started to work out, but I felt really sore. So I stopped and then I didn't stay with it. And, and now my health is really going to the garbage. And, and I'm like, God, if you just got uh, some good nutrition in there, good supplements that can help you through that soreness, help you recover faster, you'd stay in the gym, you stay in that exercise state that can do just what these researchers are talking about, give you that surge of myokines, defend your body against those cancers, suppress that growth, mark them for destruction, and get those out of your body so that you can live a healthy, long life. That's why I do this nutrition, to to 
help people stay in the gym, stay with the exercise, because it's so vital for our health. I mean, almost every major disease state can be influenced positively by exercising. So that's why I do what I do. I love my, you know, I'm going to be 59 in a couple of months and I am physically fit, healthy, drug-free. I don't have any disease states whatsoever, uh, no complications. I'm enjoying life. I'm loving life. And pinnacle of my career with my wife, we're, we're doing well with our business. Life is good. Why do we work so hard all through life to get through life to the successful part and not enjoy it because we didn't take care of our health? Just a little bit of exercise, you know, 30 to 40, 30 to 50 minutes of exercise three to five times a week and you're golden. And that's not too much to ask for living 20 plus years of some people living 20 plus years with disease states and complications, taking drugs and medications and visiting hospitals and doctor costs and insurance costs, all of that, simply because you didn't want to work out and enjoy your vitality, enjoy your health, enjoy your age as you get older. Yeah, that's why I do what I do. And I love sharing information like this when studies like this come along because it's so exciting and it's empowering. When you get to take control over your life and your health and live the life you want to, not following all the rest of the sheep right off the cliff because they're all eating the same way and you eat like them and they all fall off the cliff in disease states. You don't have to do that. You can use nutrition and exercise, de-stress, get good sleep, lots of hydration, other things that contribute to it too as well. But diet and exercise are so important. And this study, a causal study is showing that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Share if you want to get this information out to other people. Exercise can save lives. And if you love people or have people you love, try to get them out there exercising, regardless of <laughs> you know what you think of me or my company. Let's get out there and exercise. Let's let's enjoy our life to the fullest without having to suffer through disease states, without having to take our money uh, all, all taken away by doctors and, and pharmaceutical companies and hospitals and, and living in that suffering state. Why do that when it's so easy to capture these benefits just by simply putting in good nutrition, exercising, and doing it consistently on a consistent basis. Super simple. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please share. Let's help some other people pay it forward. Thanks for all that you do. Have a great week.